Good afternoon, people watching Men 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you a verse of scripture out of my Bible because sight is messed up. I don't know what happened, but oh well. So it's Romans 8. And I've given this before. Romans 8, 28. And it says... And we know all things work together for good to them that are that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Now, according to his purpose. Those are people who are born again. As simple as that. Those of us who are saved, we are called. That's who we are. We're called. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe. In him will not perish, but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is literally going to happen at any time. And you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, teach you, guide you, and change you if you let him. If you let him. So, I'm going to hit on this thing from, um, because we got two things going on at the same time. Kim texted me this morning and said that she heard Poseidon. Poseidon is Russian. Russia's submarine. Now, according to what I'm hearing and according to what I'm seeing, and I'm not going to do anything on it yet, this thing is on the Atlantic or headed for the Atlantic. Now, I hit on a little bit of this article off of War News. This came in last night off of War News. I hit a little bit on this the other day. Ukraine has hit the radar of Russia's nuclear early warning combat system, a development that automatically sets off developments as Russia's strategic weapons are expected to be put on high alert. Now, Hal Turner had something on this the other day, and I did a video on it. This goes into a little bit more in-depth as to what's happening. This uh, Again, this came out last night. But mostly the strike justifies the use of nuclear weapons by Russia, according to the country's doctrine. So although Russia does not have a DEFCON unit of measure, this strike and the ongoing tactical nuclear weapon exercise are nonetheless DEFCON level 2. It is the first time that Ukraine has attacked a target of Russia's nuclear early warning system, which is useless for Ukraine, as the radar detects incoming nuclear ICBMs, but very useful for NATO and the U.S. Now, again, they're saying that Ukraine did this. But in Russia's eyes, it don't matter who did it. It don't matter if Ukraine did it, because if Ukraine did it, they used American weapons to do it. So they're looking at Ukraine as being part of the U.S. as well. Now, I had mentioned yesterday that they're going to do, all these nations are trying to do as much as they can before this next election. They think an election of Trump is going to come in. This is why they're trying to get this done. This is why this nation is going to be destroyed before that election. That's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm sensing right now. So it says in more detail, the Ukrainians hit the, uh, I think is uh, the DM radar located near Amavir, Russia. So it says the DM is an advance over the horizon 
ultra high frequency early warning radar system for intercontinental ballistic and cruise missile attacks. It has a range of 6,000 kilometers. The particular radar was shot down that was shot down was monitoring the airspace as far as Poland. It entered combat service territory in 2013. Putin was present at the inauguration of the radar station. The station is capable of detecting even the most inconspicuous target in fractions of a second, detecting launches of various types of missiles, hundreds, even thousands of kilometers from the border. Russia media spoke of a reckless act that could lead to a serious escalation in Europe. And we're not mentioning right now the attacks that are going on right now in Tel Aviv. And I'm going to get to that here in a minute. But this says the key element of the battle command system of the country's strategic nuclear forces. It says the senator reports that a result that as a result of the strike the Cuban early warning system facility was damaged. In effect, this means that Russia, and I had mentioned this the other day when I read it off of uh, Hal Turner's site, it means that um, Russia has the right to consider this an attack on a global threat to the state and national security, which according to our doctrine, allows the use of nuclear weapons in response. That could be why this uh, Poseidon is off the Atlantic coast or headed towards the Atlantic coast. That will wipe out D.C., New York, Jersey, all of the eastern seaboard, if that's the case, if this is going to happen the way I'm feeling it's going to happen. It says here, at the same time, it is not entirely clear who made the, this essentially irrational decision. Perhaps this was the initiative of the rulers of Kiev who had completely escaped against the background of increasing failures at the front or some military maniac of the Ukrainian armed forces who decided in this way to trigger a third world war. However, given the involvement of the U.S. in the conflict of Ukraine, it cannot be completely ruled out that this attack on a military installation of the highest strategic importance of the Russian armed forces was not only agreed, but organized by Washington. Thus, we are not only at the threshold, listen very carefully to the words that I'm about to read. We are not only at the threshold, but already at the limit beyond which, if the enemy does not stop such actions, an irreversible collapse of the security st strategy of nuclear forces will begin. This is from Rogozin. It says a satellite image of the Armavir radar station in southwestern Russia shows de debris around the two buildings. Ukrainian forces have targeted several locations in this area, which is just across the Sea of Azov, using kamikaze drones. There has been some speculation that Ukrainian forces targeted the Armavir due to concerns about the radar's ability to provide early warning uh, Addison strikes. However, experts and observers point out that the that this system in Almervir are stable in their visual fields, with the main focus on the areas in the southwest. And there's maps here. Um, it's not a matter, folks, of, it says here, it remains to be seen exactly how Russia will respond. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when they're going to respond. 
Now we got this with China. And I'm about to get into Israel. But you got front, you got wars and nuclear surrounding, nuclear ships and tanks surrounding this entire globe, basically. China is preparing right now an armada of ferries and civilians, uh, civilian vessels to invade Taiwan as Beijing steps up its pressure campaign against the island nation. So while the People's Liberation Army lacks the number of amphibious landing craft needed to stage the sort of invasion seen during the D-Day landings, it could bridge the gap with civilian vessels, including dozens of gigantic roll-on, roll-off ferries that can carry hundreds of armored vehicles. Amphibious landings under fire are among the most difficult of military maneuvers. Says civilian ferries would normally be poor choices for such a mission, but could be used to transport troops in mass across the Taiwan Strait after its coastal defenses are destroyed or to overwhelm the island's military with sheer mass. Beijing launched two days of military drills in the waters around Taiwan on Thursday in which it said was a strong punishment for separatist acts. After the, uh, fair, after the uh, fiery inauguration address in Taipei earlier this week. It was the third set of exercises encircling the island in the past two years. They're getting ready to invade Taiwan. It's not a matter, again, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's going to happen. Now, this just came out this morning and my phone was going nuts. Hamas has launched a chilling barrage of rocket attacks on Israel for the first time in months, forcing civilians to flee their homes. Rocket sirens were loudly blasted across Tel Aviv after eight missiles said to have launched from Gaza, with pictures showing Israel's famous Iron Dome intercepting several of them in midair. The Israeli military says no injuries have been reported yet despite Hamas's military wing. Labeling it a big missile attack. Hamas announced they were aiming for Israel's largest city. Saying we fired a large salvo at Tel Aviv in response to the Zionist massacres of civilians. It is thought that the barrage of missiles came from the city of Rafa where Israel has been constantly bombarding with strikes as they look to end the war. So, folks, there you have it. What I'm feeling right now and what I'm sensing is the church is about to leave. Because now is not only around the world the U.S. is being closed in on right now. And it's just, and you cannot put this back in a box. This is, when this genie gets loose, you can't put it back in a box. This is, this is it. You start talking nukes, submarines, nuclear subs, Poseidon, Sarmats. Yeah. You can't put this back in a box. Whoever damaged that, and I do believe <laughs> the U.S. had a lot to do with that damage that happened at that radar system in Russia. That's it. That is it right there. So I'm going to link all this in the description box. Um, we will see what happens here. It's Memorial Day weekend. And we shall see what happens. So I'll link all this in the description box and I will be back later. Thank you.